Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back. We're here in the Nanyang Championships North American, or I should just say American qualifiers. It's friendship, dedication, love facing off against Shazam, a battle of the North American Giants. I'm Lyrical Dota, joined today by Gorgon the Wonder Cow. We had a little bit of trouble getting this game started. It's got to be said, there were a few issues along the way, but we've finally been able to do it. Um, choices were made, decisions were had. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing well after that wait, and with only 20 seconds of reserve time for Shazam, I feel like we might need to get directly into this draft, right? That's, yeah, that's Shazam are, they, they are going to have to think fast. Nature's Prophet already out, Beastmaster and Boker right out of the gate. Yeah, and you can see right now, I'm going to bring down that overlay quickly so you can check it out. 20 seconds is all that you get. Meanwhile, Shazam, or fr rather, fr Friendship, Dedication, Love are going to have 2 minutes and 10 seconds. And they're picking pretty quick here. We've got the Nature's Prophet as the first phase, as well as the Beastmaster Invoker. Interestingly, we see the Elder Titan as a first phase ban out. This is a hero that we saw do a ton of work in the previous uh, day. I think that it was DC that ended up running it first phase, and uh, they ran it together with a Life Stealer, if I'm not, rem if I'm not mistaken and just completely demolished with it. Uh, so kind of interesting to see that hero band out, but usual suspects for the picks. Yeah, up until very recently, if you said, oh yeah, somebody might ban an Elder Titan, you would be joking. It, it would be a joke, and it would be, it would be a laugh track behind it. But we have seen a fair amount of experimenting with that hero. He is decently strong if you can get him out to a lead. I think... From what I've seen and the numbers I've run, he's not super successful in the experiments, but when he works, he really works. Definitely. Well, and I'm, I'm really liking also, it feels like there's just so much about this meta is the heroes that individual teams play. And, you know, we talked about the Elder Titan. You also see the Slaughter Band out there. Alchemist, the sort of predominant hero, I, I mean... I want to say predominant hero in North American Dota, but there's a lot of other heroes that accentuate it, but it does always feel like that's one of those heroes that is always either going to be picked or banned uh, pretty much when you're playing in North America. Also, the Doom, the Lone Druid, and the Spectre, so a solid of those safe lanes getting taken out as well. Um, I'd be a little bit worried at this stage about the, the FDL propensity for being able to roam Wait, early with that Nature's Prophet and Puck. Pretty, pretty mobile heroes. Yeah, pretty mobile heroes. They also get going into the mid game with a no life stealer ban here and the potential for a puck bomb or a nature's profit teleport in with the life stealer and his popularity right now. Uh, if you are Shazam, you do want to consider that as a possible issue. Hmm. Also, I'm looking at this. You've got a, a lot of pushing potential that can come out from Shazam. Like the Beastmaster, Inner Beast Aura, Invoker with those Forge Spirits, now Vengeful Spirit also. That's This is, I, I think, one of the key pieces that people don't often think about with it, with Venge, is the ability to, to find that aggressive swap when you're trying to break a high ground. It can completely change the whole dynamic of a game, depending upon who you end up finding with that ability. And meanwhile, yeah. Friendship, Dedication, Love, they take the Phoenix themselves. A little bit of D-push and team fight potential. Seems pretty strong. Oh, and Juggernaut, they're doubling down on it. Yeah, they're going straight into the push. It's, unlike most invokers we see, although in the Americas we have been seeing, I think, a lot more Exhort invoker than we see generally around the world. Um, uh, most invokers we see is on this patch have been Quaswex. At least I think that that's safe to say. Um, but when you have a Vengeful Spirit, when you have a Beastmaster and a Juggernaut, Towers are your targets. I would be very surprised if we did not see an Exhort invoker here for the Forge Spirit and the damage that comes out of that. Yeah. I would agree. It does feel like that's one of the stronger ways to do it. And of course, the natural combo that you can have in a gank with the Beastmaster Roar into a Sunstrike. It's just a tremendous amount of damage that comes out. And FDL are going to go back for the Lion, so a little bit of that instant disable. I gotta say, Shazam's draft to me feels like very clear in what they want to try to accomplish. And meanwhile, FDL, it looks like they're sort of trying to wait for that late game capability. They're, they've got a lot of heroes that delay the game that can do some split pushing and some ratting. Uh, a good amount of team fight too. You got like, you know, the, the synergy there with Dream Coil and, and uh, Supernova. But I'm kind of wondering what is their win condition going to be? And their, their last pick here needs to address that. Yeah, their last pick I expect to be a more combat-oriented hero. I like the Medusa ban here, potentially being a strong AoE hero. I, I'm not sure that they know exactly what they want because they're taking plenty of time to consider their ban, right? Yeah. So they're probably talking about what they want to pick as well. A Sven would be a decent option here. Um, 
in terms of things that they are comfortable running as well on this patch, a Slark would be a not terrible option since they do all tend to, to spike in the mid game. They have a decent amount of control already with the Dream Coil and the stuns that come out of the Lion. They can afford to not have hard disable on their carry if they feel like they need that. Yeah, I would agree. It does feel like that's one of the possibilities. That being said, if they wanted to double down on it and go for something like a Sven themselves, mm -hmm. uh, there's that possibility also. That being said, there's a lot of ways to, to mess with the Sven in this draft, so I don't think that that's the best hero in the world, like with Roar yeah. and Swap. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Like They banned out a lot of those big ones. The Spec, the, the Medusa, either one of those heroes would have fit great in the draft. Um, yeah. Uh, into I, I like the Medusa more than the Spec. But spec into a push lineup she really what you get out of her is that she can sit and farm and then come to a fight anywhere on the map so she benefits a lot from having a lineup that will defend at least your tier two towers right. because then she can maximize the distance between where she will hunt to and where she is farming uh, and, and allocate more resources because of that uh the shazam clearly looked to be knocking down towers by 20 minutes you know tier two is knocking them down by around 20 minutes if not sooner Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where friendship, dedication, love go, but it's clear that they're not sure either. Yeah, I still think time. that the Slark would be okay here. He'll window probably before those tier two towers start to drop, as long as FDL stay relatively. Uh, the Morphling is something that they've run on this patch. Oh my god, what are we doing here? Okay, so we've got very clear drafts in terms of what they're trying to accomplish. The Morphling, obviously, to sort of make that go to the late game. There are literally uh, no silences right now mm -hmm. on Shazam's side. Uh, a couple of decent stuns, but Lincoln's here is going to be great this game. Yeah. It, I, I don't know. Do you think that Morphling is going to come online quickly enough? I think if FDL chain their AOE potential uh, effectively to protect space in the mid game, they should be fine. And the Morphling should get the space. It, it's really, I think, the ball's in Shazam's court, whether or not Shazam are able to actually get in and knock down those towers in an effective manner. Because stripping away area control is really going to be the only method that they have to, to shut that Morphling down. I would agree. It, it feels like... I... I, I... I kind of want to take Shazam's draft, actually. Um, I, I would agree that there's ways in which you can try and punish that Morphling, but it feels like it's... Uh, or rather, ways in which the Morphling can get what he needs to, to sort of carry the game. But I'm really concerned about if he doesn't have a good start and if they're able to sort of punish him here with the Brax playing the Beastmaster in the offlane role. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one. Uh, okay, so for anybody that happened to... They're just saying go. For anybody that happened to uh, miss it, we had an Odyssey 35 minutes late. This um, is like the Xeno's paradox of getting a Dota game started. Every time you get halfway there, there's an infinite number of points between you and your destination. That, again, is just a hell of a reference. Um, I love it so much. I, I don't know what that it means, but it sounded amazing. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, uh, there's going to be like two people in the, in the Twitch chat that will get that, and everybody else is going to hit me hard for bringing something like that up. Anyway, as, as we're moving into the game, I, I agree with you. I think that Shazam's draft is generally going to be easier to execute because it requires a lot less communication, yeah. um, right? You just kind of barrel into towers once you guys hit power spikes and communicate basically where your spells are going to be. But uh, FDL, if they do communicate well, they don't like their puck there's no real way to punish that hero. There's no real way to punish the, the Phoenix either. Mm -hmm. There's no real way to punish the Morphling if those heroes get going. Um, the, the, like you mentioned, the lack of silences, there's not very much in terms of hard, sturdy disable for any of those heroes as well. So the, the resources of control for Shazam are going to be uh, very tightly bound. Yeah. I, uh, I think that probably how quickly these tier one towers go down is also going to be a pretty good determining factor of how well all of this is going to go as there's a little bit of a battle going on up here in the top lane as I, I believe this is Pandango, by the way, who is playing and going to be able to run away from um, for a moment the Phoenix. Um, he was the, the last minute. I'm not sure if it's Pandango or SVG, but I, I'm pretty sure that it was Pandango um, who's going to be stepping in for them in this role. And uh, they got a two-person or a spike, but... Beastmaster Undying, it seems pretty pretty scary. 
Yeah, this is certainly a lane that you need to be careful about because if you're sapping all the strength and then those axes come in, right, and, and the damage that comes from the, the boar as well mm. uh, is deceptive if you're losing strength already. Uh, it actually, because when you get that strength back, it scales up basically the damage. Right. I, I also uh, am looking at it and no uh, orb of venom as of yet, um, although it I, do you think that's something that they end up going to for? Like, they've got the boots already on the Beastmaster. Would it still be worth it to try and, like, run down the line, maybe? Sorry, I didn't catch what you were saying. It is it is SVG uh, okay. playing on that Undying. That's what I was checking. So I did not catch what you were saying at all. No My problem. apologies. Repeat the question for me. Orb of Venom. Good item on these guys over here? Which guys? Uh, Brax or potentially uh, or SVG? Maybe? Okay. I, I honestly, the orb of venom requires them to get pretty far forward into a triple um, range lane with a pretty good set of stuns coming out of the lion. Mm. Um, a lot of their harass is just going to come from spamming spells, gotcha. uh, spamming the boar, spamming the undying decay. Uh, like you just saw, SVG got one auto attack in, and he's been <laughs> trying to harass for 35 seconds. So probably not, but. You know, if they feel comfortable moving past the, the lane equilibrium and, and harassing maybe a little bit in the future. The slow would be nice if they could ever execute it. Right. Yeah, they, they are keeping a pretty good distance there. And I think that FDO realized that inherent danger uh, are going to have to back out again for the moment. Continuing to just spam that out. Has the, the mango if he wants to use it, but nothing doing as of yet. Mid lane, Puck has a DD rune, so that's going to help out in the last hitting roll. 16 and 5 versus the 10 and 3. I think it was relatively even before that DD came up. Um, so nothing really to report on in the mid lane. Yeah, it should break relatively evenly, and unless there's a good rotation from one team or the other. Uh, I don't think Invoker really has the tools to hold a puck down, and the puck doesn't really have the tools to overcome the uh, regeneration that comes from that quas. So, uh, especially since puck runs a bottle and Invoker doesn't, a rune is almost always guaranteed for the puck. Right. A little bit of shenanigans going on over here. That was the uh, Vengeful Spirit looking to try and find the Nature's Prophet, but didn't quite get the, the angle on him, so... Gonna head back in there and oh, is this gonna be a wraparound? They might be able to do something Drunk. here to this Venge. That's gonna be the magic missile. Does not get blocked in by the creeps, but might still go down. A couple more right clicks is all they need, and I was a little bit of an overextension by Fun. I think he didn't realize that the Nature's Prophet uh, TP'd back so quickly. So really good yeah. rotation there. Yeah, he was. I think just trying to wrap around and drop down. Oh that my way. God! Or Top lane. Oh my goodness! SVG killing off them quickly. And you talked about it. The uh, axes in conjunction with that decay, pretty good. Yeah, it works out. SVG is saying, I don't have time to even be playing one game. So we're going to make this quick. Getting double kills right out of the gate. Uh, as far as Eventual Spirit, I think he was walking up to drop down this ward for vision, and he didn't expect the Nature's Prophet to strip away the trees that were hiding him. Mm. Right, that's he called the tree inside of it. Fun is not having any. <laughs> he is once again being attacked down by the Nature's Prophet. Phoenix rotating as well. Getting Again. body blocked by the jug. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of action going on in this game. Up top, they're almost going to kill off the Morphling as well, and he is going to go over to the Strength form. Can they find that? So that's the Waveform forward dropping very low, almost out of mana now. 50 HP. Is he going to go down? I think that they found this kill, possibly. They do manage to kill him off, and another one go in the way of Shazam, and this is not what you want to see if you're FDL. Yeah, Phoenix can't be down here, to be honest. This is just too, too difficult to uh, dual lane to face with Morphling, who is not you know, he's not exactly well known for his leaning prowess morphling. He's kind of difficult to kill because of the, the strength morph that we just saw. But in terms of his overall damage output, he really does just waveform in. Excuse me, I, I meant the just morph. But the, the he really, his damage output is just waveform in and, and hope that you've got stuns in your lane or some sort of nukes in your lane to, to help you finish anybody off. He probably is going to need Phoenix up here defensively if he wants to return to lane. I mean, the big problem that I'm seeing, though, is because they were running that tri-lane for a while, like Beastmaster got four, Undyne has four, they're actually almost about to be able to get five, and Phoenix is stuck at level one. Like, they just did not get the experience that they needed on this hero. Lion is still sitting at level four, but it's going to be tough going for them as this goes on, as I miss the kill in the mid lane. My goodness, Undyne rotates in as well as the Vengeful Spirit, and they find one for themselves, another one going the way of Shazam. That's what we were talking about, right? The... Uh... The rotation in on the mid lane makes the mid lane break one way or the other. Without that rotation, the mid lane would have been fine either way, but Invoker doesn't get going quite as fast as the Puck. So I, I do think that for Shazam, that 
was a necessary rotation to make sure that the puck does not get out and ahead and active too early. And they are going to be able to find another one over here. TC committing that Omni Slash. They find the Phoenix again, just picking up that level two. It, it, it hurts pretty bad. I mean, the hero is so freaking good with that Sunray, but you do really need levels on him. Yeah, you need levels and you need to be where you are needed, right? You, you want to be around people who love you. And sitting in the off lane is not where he's needed right now. Oh, cold snap. Going to be able to get the magic missile as well. This puck's going to be in a lot of trouble. They are not quite able to find the kill as of yet. Meanwhile, they're going to be able to bring back in the Nature's Prophet, trying to see if he can do something, but they'll be able to soak up that tower damage. And I think that this is not going to end up translating. Yeah, this everything is starting to fall apart here. And it really comes down to this top lane not being able to control. Right, and look at that. Oh just Morphling Sunstrike. No big deal. Oh, that hurts. That really hurts. That ward just giving them so much freaking vision, and I heard it coming from afar. That Seven to one. I mean, exactly we've been looking at the CS, but really it doesn't tell the tale. With all of the kills online, the tour, the three cores for, for Shazam are just so freaking farmed. Oh, and they're just going to run at the Phoenix. Yeah, having that ward up this early before that Sunstrike was actually a really smart play. Moving in there, getting it up. The, the Morphling fell into the jungle because he had he didn't have the support from the Phoenix in order to, to make that lane work. Um, the lane, obviously, it just they were not capable of winning this lane two on two with with a lion Morphling into the aggression that is a Beastmaster and an Undying. Uh, they would have been hard pressed to win that lane against one of those heroes, right? One of those heroes could have maybe not gotten kills, but would have been pretty decent at harassing. Ooh, and looking for a little bit more Sand King. He is under the ward. They should realize that they've got vision right here, and yeah. there's going to be the magic missile. Sunstrike is going to be able to hit, and Invoker finds another one just over and over again. CC and C is going to try and see if he can make something happen. Fun, just able to outrun, oh, oh, but he is going to end up going down finally. So they get one last little turnaround magic missile, but... I'm not sure if it's it's enough given the the way that the game has gone to turn this around. No, I I do think that the lion got maybe caught out there expecting that the vision had come from a hawk mm. and not realizing that it was a permanent ward that's you know chilling up here indefinitely um, or semi permanent. They do expire after all. But already a tower down that should maybe open up some space for the morphling. It's it's not super common that you see people collapse onto the top lane after there's no objective there to take. Uh, we'll probably see some rotation sound to get the rest of the towers. At the very least, this will give FDL presumably some time to farm the Morphling up. Uh, he needs a lot of time, though, because he's way behind. Yeah, In terms of net worth, look at him. He's below the Undying. It's, it's a tough one. He's gone Iron Talon because that's how his lane went. And Brax is actually going to be sitting here. He has a Necro Book level one at nine minutes into the game. The boar is going to come out looking for a roar. Isn't quite able to get it. He needs to wait for him out of here. And it does look like he's going to be able to run away. Meanwhile, mid lane, they're going to be able to find a kill over here on the puck. And that was a quick little rotation. They found it. The Morphling did finally escape. But Tombstone dropped mid. And this is going to be a tier one tower. No problem. Yeah, this... Uh it's just coming down to Shazam's draft is much easier to execute. Like all they have to do is sit aggressively in that top lane, not dive too deep, and start rotating on towers as early as they possibly can. And they they've been hitting that to a T. For for FDL, out of the draft, they really needed to start getting some rotations in for some kills. Honestly, rotating the Nature's Prophet out of the off lane and into the top lane to try and just four v two at a favorable moment probably would have been the call. At this point in time, they maybe just need to sack some tier ones, get some vision up, and try to get the Morphling a basic item set up. Um, he's not really going to be able to provide any significant amount of damage in these fights for a while now. Up top. Yeah, it's it's all gone wrong. I mean, they get the Sunstrike. It's not quite a kill as of yet, but with the Necro books, there might be able to find it. The boar, are they going to be able to get it? No, he does escape. But again, it's like... Most Pyrrhic of victories as you're taking down all of the tier one towers and the tier two tower up here as well. Nobody's coming to defend this for Brax. If they try and TP over there, then they're just going to lose their tier two in the bottom lane. So they do go out. Finger of death. Brax runs away, oh. dodges the waveform. Oh my god, I think he's actually out of here. He slows him on down with the board. Meanwhile, on the other side, they're just taking down the tower and he's going to TP away. They get away on nothing with murder. Oh, that is. That hurts. Oh, and then the sun strike to add insult to injury. Oh, my Knocking goodness. down the line. Yeah, that is 
That is enraging. <laughs> if you are FDL, that that would have been a big kill. That Beastmaster has five thousand net worth. He has almost the same net worth as your top two heroes combined. Oh. So the AOE gold, if that had been a solo kill for the Morphling, would have bounced that Morphling more or less back to where he needed to be. At least very close, right? That's probably eight hundred AOE gold at, uh, or eight hundred total gold at eleven minutes, sub eleven minutes. It's a lot. So I will say that there's sometimes a, a trap that you fall into with these types of lineups where you feel like you're more well prepared for the game than you actually are and then you suddenly end up taking a bad fight and it all swings back the other way. They actually are going to be able to catch their onto the puck in a ton of trouble. They didn't realize they had vision. Roar them up one time as well and they're going to see if they can kill off the sun but I don't know if they actually have vision of it so this is going to end up being the Omni Slash over onto Nature's Prophet. The Supernova does not really do a whole heck of a lot. Nature's Prophet's going to die on the other side. Vengeful Spirit dropping low but not dead as of yet. There's going to be the magic missile trying to run away. They find the kill, but I think that that's all that they're going to be able to get as it looks like, well, Sunray's pretty good. I don't know if they're going to be able to, to really do a whole lot here, though, outside of it. Huh? They're just trying to buy time, make it as hard as possible so that the Morphling has space to, to farm. Because there's no way they can test that, right? They, they, they cannot go into that. Morphling certainly can't go into a choke point fight, into a tombstone, into a potential Omni Slash or anything that Invoker has right now. So it's uh, just just buy as much time as you possibly can. Morphling does have a Helm of the Dominator up, so Brown Boots Helm of the Dominator compared to Beastmaster's level 2 Necronomicon, Invoker's level 1 Necronomicon with drums, Juggernaut's Yasha, Undying's Urn and Headdress. Ventral Spirit has a, a comparable amount of farm, I guess, in terms of actionable items, but that's not really what you want. So the whole, like... Helm of the Dominator Morphling thing. Can you tell me what what is the value of this item over something along the lines of trying to build into a statty type of item? Is it just that he needs something now to fight, or is this something that he would be doing regardless? I wish I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I would expect that as something to do with being able to try to catch up uh, using that armor, using the life seal, and being able to potentially stack. Uh, but that would just be a guess. This is not something that I've seen a whole lot of, as, and Morphling's not a hero we see a whole lot of in this current metagame. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, we'll see how it works out for him. I, my instinct is that he just needed something relatively, uh, something that would help tank him a little bit, that would give him jungle sustain, because that's going to be his only avenue of farm, and he felt like that was his best option. He also did go for an Iron Talon, right? Like... This I mean, guy is foreseeing trouble in his future. He has 440 HP. Like, it's, it's a rough life for him. I think that Sunstrike actually just kills him from zero at this point almost with the levels that Invoker has um, if he's not careful. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it's fairly close. We'll it's see in a second. Close. It depends on how he's morphed as well. Okay. Well, because if he's morphed with a little more strength, then he'll have a, a little more, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. versatility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about this build, though, also? The, the Invoker, Brown Boots, Drums, Aquila, and then Necronomicon. They are, like, they, they are just want over to end. it. They're, this I've, game is no MSS more. MSS or SVG has to go. Like, this is the sort of draft, <laughs> literally, this is that's what this draft is, right? Yeah. He has to go. They wanted to finish as fast as they possibly can oh. because they need to get Pandago in for game two because F SVG wanted to sit out, but he couldn't because they delayed so long in the rules. It's, it's not a a game decision thing. It's good for them that it's working out, but really it was just they were in a bind and they had to come up with something fast. Well, they are certainly, uh, they came up with it. There were answers abound. They have the Sunray that's going to continue to try and keep them pushed out, but Necro books all over the freaking place. They, I assume on the side of uh, FDL are just hoping for this to, to maybe wait out and the Supernova's going to go. Fun trying to run away for the moment. They're still stuck and losing the tier three towers. Like, they commit everything, and there's just nothing they can do. The Phoenix is going to try and dive away. The right clicks are going to go through, and it does manage to finish them off. Invoker finds the kill. MSS just doing it big. Sankey trying to do anything at all possible. Gets that spike off onto several, but he's going to pay for it. TC on a dominating streak, 15-3, to three, and it doesn't feel like it's going to change anytime soon. CC and C trying to run away. He, it's going to get caught there by the Sunstrike. MSS on a freaking spree. He might go down here, but still has the ages. And again, there's just nothing for them to do. There's no response yeah they, they just got off to too slow of a start like the lanes were already rough for them and the draft was already a little rough for them but then giving up a double kill in the top lane having the phoenix rotate bottom it's like 
there are kids at a party and someone threw up in the bounce house and you think that that's a mess until the kids start bouncing in it, right? <laughs> and it just gets worse and worse. <laughs> what is that? Straight forth goes through and they're going to end up losing the tier three of the tower uh, in the bottom here. Yeah, this is a... This is uh, definitely a mess. I think that's about the best you could say about it. Um, they are going to do a lot of damage there. SVG goes down, so 17 to 4. Is the dream going to be real? Brax trying to run away. They're going to be going to be able to kill off another. It's the buyback on the Undying. GG ends up getting called, and it looks like that's going to about do it. 16 and a half minutes in. You're Holy fit hell. Three of these games and the delay between. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, well, um. We're gonna maybe see a different uh, hero or a different player in the next one. What are you hoping to see as a, a change of pace for FDL to give them a little bit of a better shot? I would like to see them have a more cohesive strategy for their laning phase because that's really where it fell apart. Okay. Well, we're gonna be back in just a couple of minutes, hopefully, and this game is going to take place. Stick around, everybody. Shazam versus FDL here in the Nanyang Championships. American qualifiers, we'll be back in a bit.